gingiva, microscopic structure of connective tissue. Hey there, perio enthusiasts. Remember when we talked about the gingival epithelium? Well, buckle up, because we're about to explore its cool cousin, the lamina propria. Lamina propria is divided into two portions, the papillary layer, which is the most superficial, consisting of finger-like projections that interlock with the epithelial red apex. It's like a gentle handshake between layers. Below this, there's the deep reticular layer, which is connected to the alveolar bone. Now, unlike the epithelium, the lamina propria is not as crowded with the busy cities of cells, but is more of a serene landscape with its own residents. There are cells like fibroblasts, which have a role in both the synthesis as well as degradation of the collagen and the elastic fibers, thus playing a role in the development, maintenance and repair of the gingival connective tissue. These spindle-shaped cells act like a master tailor that crafts a custom-fit suit because they meticulously weave and align the collagen fibers, ensuring gums have the perfect fit against our teeth. And guess what? They've got a whole crew. Vigilant mast cells, clean-up crew like macrophages, and the balance keepers, eosinophils, neutrophils, and lymphocytes. It's a team effort. Have you ever observed the intricate patterns on the leaf? The gingival connective tissue has its unique pattern, just like our fingerprint. No two people have the same structure. You can call it the gums blueprint. Let us continue. Within the lamina propria, there's a crucial space called the extracellular compartment. Think of this compartment as the motor between bricks, essential for the structure. Now, within this space, we find the ground substance, like a gel-like filler, filling the gaps between the cells and fibers. These are composed of specific molecules like glycoproteins, proteoglycans, and glycosaminoglycans. Glycoproteins are fibronectin and laminin. Proteoglycans are like sponges filled with water. They help maintain the tissue's hydration and shape. The primary ones here are heparin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, and chondroitin sulfate. Lastly, we have the glycosaminoglycans, with hyaluronic acid being the primary one. These act like lubricants, ensuring smooth movement and communication between cells. Next, we have fibers, the backbone of the lamina propria. The three main types here are collagen, reticular, and elastic. Of these, type 1 collagen is predominant, offering tensile strength. Meanwhile, type 4 collagen fibers act as connectors, linking the type 1 bundle to the basement membrane and blood vessel walls. Together, these collagen bundles form the gingival group of fibers, which provides the foundational support essential for the tissue structure and function. Did you know that spider silk, one of the softest materials, is stronger than steel? And guess what? It is primarily made of proteins, with collagen being a major component. So, in a way, one of nature's most delicate materials owes its strength to the mighty collagen. Let us now diverge into the intricate details of the gingival fibers, understanding their types, attachments, and functions. For clarity, we'll categorize the gingival fibers into principal and secondary fibers. The principal fibers are of five types dentogingival fibers, alveologingival fibers, dentoperiosteal fibers, circular fibers, 
transeptal fibers, starting with the dentogingival fibers. The name is quite revealing. Dento indicates their origin from the cementum, while gingival indicates their extension into the lamina propria of the gingiva. Their primary role is to offer support. The next category within the principal group is the alveolo-gingival fibers. Alveolo suggests their origin from the bone, specifically the periosteum of the alveolar crest. Gingival indicates their coronal progression into the gingiva's lamina propria. Their primary function is to connect the gingiva to the bone. Moving on to the dentoperiosteal fibers. As we already know, dento means they come from the cementum. Here, particularly near the cemento-enamel junction. And periosteal means they end up in the periosteum of the alveolar crest. These fibers anchor the tooth to the bone. Therefore, their main function is to protect the periodontal ligament. Next in line, we have the circular group of fibers. They are present within the free marginal gingiva and the attached gingiva, but coronal to the alveolar crest. Why the name circular? These fibers encircle each tooth to maintain the contour and position of the gingival margin. Lastly, we have the transeptal fibers. Trans meaning across and septa refers to the septum, which means you see these fibers connecting the proximal surfaces of adjacent teeth. In simpler terms, they start from the distal surface of one tooth and end up in the mesial surface of the other. They also protect the interproximal bone as they are located above the alveolar crest. That wraps up the principal group of fibers. Transeptal fibers link all teeth within the dental arch. While part of the supraalveolar fiber system, they uniquely support arch integrity. Post removal, they regenerate swiftly. In advanced periodontal disease, remnants of these fibers persist. Unbelievable, isn't it? Moving on, Let's discuss the secondary group of fibers, namely interpapillary fibers, transgingival fibers, intercircular fibers, intergingival fibers, semicircular, and periosteogingival fibers. Let's now study them in detail, starting with the periosteogingival fibers. As the name suggests, they start from the periosteum of the lateral aspect of the alveolar process and extend to the attached gingiva. These fibers act like anchors, connecting the gums to the jawbone. Next, we have the interpapillary fibers, which are present within the interdental papilla, connecting one papilla to the other. They are like bridges between the spaces of our teeth, giving support to the gums in between. Next, we have the transgingival fibers, which are present within the attached gingiva. These fibers wrap around our teeth like a protective net, keeping them in place. Moving on, we have intercircular fibers that start from the cementum of the distal surface of one tooth, split buccally and lingually along the adjacent tooth, and get inserted into the cementum of the other. Think of them as loops that start from one tooth, go around another and come back. They help hold teeth steadily. Next, we have intergingival fibers. They are seen in the attached gingiva, running straight down along the teeth, giving the gums their shape and support. And lastly, we have semicircular fibers, which start from the proximal surface of one tooth, split buccally and lingually, and end in the proximal surface of the same tooth. They act like little loops around each tooth, helping to shape the gums around them. 
At this point, you may be thinking, aren't transgingival, intercircular and semicircular fibres the same? The answer is no. Here is an example to clear the confusion. Have a look at this image. While transgingival fibres are linear, initiating from one tooth's cementum and merging with another's, intercircular fibres bifurcate buccally and lingually and merge into the cementum of the adjacent tooth. On the other hand, semicircular fibres split lingually and buccally, concluding in the same tooth cementum. Quite a difference, right? To sum up, the gingival fibres are required to brace marginal gingiva against the tooth, help provide rigidity to withstand occlusal forces and help in uniting the free gingiva with the cementum of the root and adjacent attached gingiva. Before we proceed, let us have a quick recap using a flowchart. This brings us to our last segment, the blood, nerve and lymph flow in the gingiva. The gingiva receives its blood supply from the supraperiosteal arteries along the jawbone, interdental arteries between the teeth and arterioles from the periodontal ligament. The nerve supply varies. Maxillary teeth are served by the infraorbital, posterior superior alveolar, greater palatine and nasopalatine nerves, while the mandibular teeth rely on mental long buccal and lingual nerves. Talking about lymphatics, they drain into the submaxillary lymph nodes. To conclude, lamina propria is like a supportive cushion beneath our epithelium with its own set of workers and materials that ensure everything stays in place and functions well. Thanks for joining our gumtastic adventure today. In our next video, we will learn how to correlate the microscopic with macroscopic features. Till then, keep it simple, buddy.